assalamu alaikum students so this is our second lecture of sensory system and if we we revise the first lecture uh, are you able to define and classify receptors do you remember the different types of receptors that we discussed in which you have the mechanoreceptors uh, different types of mechanoreceptors and different functions of mechanoreceptors chemoreceptors the nociceptors thermoreceptors and the electromagnetic receptors which receptors are for touch, which receptors are for sustained touch and for sustained pressure, which receptors are for fast vibration and which ones are for the slow vibration, which are deeper in the tissues, which are superficial and the different type of receptors. So we cover that, your reading material, uh, Guyton 13th edition, chapter 47, Ganon chapter 8, and Mushtaq physiology if you want to add it. So by the end of this lecture, you will be able to explain how receptors function and how they generate receptor potential with special reference to Bacinian corpuscles. You will be able to describe adaptation, give examples and its mechanisms. So how the receptors function? If you recall the definition of receptors, receptors were specialized transducers that convert the external stimuli, environmental stimuli into action potential. So from that definition, what do you think how the receptors function? They, what they do is they do the transduction or the conversion of the sensory stimulus into receptor potential. How they do that? By using the different stimuli depending on the stimulus. So the stimulus could be chemical, it could be mechanical, or it could be thermal, or it could be electromagnetic. Whatever is the stimulus, it will cause opening of the channels change in the membrane permeability, opening of the channels. So this change in the membrane potential is called as receptor potential. So when the channels they open, there will be influx of sodium. Why influx of sodium, not chloride, not potassium? Influx of sodium because inside it's, because it's negative. So it will, uh, the sodium is, uh, are the, uh, the positive ions are the ions will, will, which will go in. Chloride will not go in because uh, the rest of the membrane potential is negative. Now, why not potassium? Because of the concentration gradient in which sodium concentration is high outside, potassium is low outside the cell. So it is the sodium that goes into the cell. So whenever there is a stimulus, there is a change in the membrane permeability, opening of the channels, influx of sodium. Influx of sodium leads to hypopolarization decrease in the membrane potential, decrease in the negativity, increase in the positivity and receptor potential. So this is how action, how receptor potential is generated. Now, how the receptor potential moves to the adjacent areas of the nerve membrane. So at one point, there is receptor potential. How it moves to the adjacent area because of what we call as the local circuit. Because of the receptor potential, at one point, there was influx of sodium. So there is positivity inside. The adjacent membrane has negativity. This creates local circuit in which ions they move from positive side to negative side. In any circuit, it's like this. So the ions of sodium will start moving to the adjacent area, thereby opening more and more channels. Now, as there is more influx of sodium, there is also opening of sodium voltage-gated channels. When the membrane potential or the receptor potential reaches to nodes of Ranvier, there will be opening of large number of sodium voltage-gated channels, which will cause the potential to reach to the threshold, thereby causing action potential. So this is a summary of how receptor function or how receptor potential is generated, a very important question. So by transduction of stimulus into action potential, the stimulus causes opening of channels. There is influx of sodium and we know now why it is sodium. The membrane becomes less negative, hypopolarization and receptor potential. The positive ions at that point causes local circuit and spread of the potential, what we call as propagation of the potential. When it reaches the nodes of Ranvier, there is opening of large number of voltage-gated sodium channels, which will cause action potential. Even before reaching to the nodes of Ranvier, there is opening of voltage-gated sodium channels. However, more and more, very large number of uh, voltage-gated sodium channels are at the nodes of Ranvier, 
which will cause the potential to reach the threshold. And because of the none or all law, there is action potential. Now, if we talk about how action potential or how receptor potential is generated in the Bessinian corpuscle. Now, I would like you to Google an image of Bessinian corpuscle. You have the mobile in front of you. So please Google an image. Just have a look how it looks like because this receptor is very, very special and it will make you understand how receptor potential is generated and also how adaptation happens in mechanoreceptors, especially encapsulated receptors. So how it looks like, I'm sure you have seen it now. It has multiple capsules, multiple layers, lamellae. It is vis filled with viscous fluid. This is the Pacinian corpuscle. How action potential or how receptor potential was its receptor potential? How receptor potential is generated? Whenever, whenever there is a mechanical stimulus, we say that Pacinian corpuscles are stimulated by fast vibration and depressure. So a pressure is applied here. When there is a pressure applied at this point, it will push the viscous fluid towards the membrane of the nerve. Now, pushing it towards the membrane of the nerve will cause disturbance of the permeability of the membrane and opening of channels, which will cause influx of sodium, decrease in negativity and increase in positivity. So there is a change in the membrane potential here, depolarization. Now this depolarization, because positivity inside, there is a negativity in the adjacent area. These positive ions will move to the negative area in the local circuit. This will cause propagation of, you can see the propagation of the receptor potential until it reaches to the nose of Ranveer. Now, what will happen here? There is opening of large number of voltage-gated sodium channels, influx of sodium and generation of action potential, which will spread by solitary conduction. So this is how receptor potential is generated in Bacinian corpuscles. Now, if we talk about adaptation, what does it mean? What is adaptation? In a simple language, in a layman language, something like adjustment. So when we talk about nerve fibers, it's almost the same, but let's talk in physiological terms. Adaptation is whenever there is a continuous stimulus that is applied. Initially, the receptor responds at high rate at first, and then progressively, there will be less response, less response, and less response until very few firing is there or there is none. So this is adaptation. For adaptation, there should be continuous sensory stimulus. For if the uh, receptor is adapting, it means initially there will be firing, initially there is perception, and then gradually the firing decreases until it becomes very few or none. Now the mechanism of adaptation, I want you to think of this. When you apply constant pressure on Bacinian corpuscles, think of Bacinian corpuscles because that is the easiest to understand. Initially, there is rapid firing of action potential, but gradually firing decreases. There is adaptation. What do you think is the mechanism? And I want you to think of the diagram of Bacinian corpuscles. This is diagram of Bacinian corpuscles. So initially, there is rapid firing. Why afterwards there is no firing? It's one of the very rapidly adapting receptors. Think about it. I'll give you a hint. If you apply a pressure here, now the fluid will be displaced and it will cause permeability of the membrane of the nerve and receptor potential will be generated. If you keep on applying the pressure, after some time, there is no generation of receptor potential and ultimately no further generation of action potential. Initially, there was a lot of firing, a lot of action potential, but afterwards, none is there. Why is it so? I'll give you a hint, which is that the basinal corpuscle has viscous fluid inside. Uh, the structure, it's viscous. It's viscoelastic structure. I'm sure you have reached to the answer by now. Yes, because there is redistribution of the fluid. This is viscoelastic structure. So initially there was the fluid was pushed to the membrane of the nerve. After some time, despite that you're applying continuous pressure, the, because the structure is viscoelastic, there was redistribution of the fluid. So this membrane is not stimulated anymore. It goes back to normal. There was redistributed this viscous fluid and the membrane is again normal, no firing anymore. So one of the important mechanisms by which 
But senior thrombosis, the uh, adapt is the redistribution of the fluid because it's a viscoelastic structure, which we have explained. Now, the topic of adaptation, you can do it from Guyton as well as from Stark physiology. So we have one mechanism which we mentioned is readjustment or redistribution of the, of the uh, fluid. This happens in the capsulated type of receptors. There are other mechanisms. Accommodation, you studied in the first year as one of the properties of nerve fibers, accommodation. So accommodation is one of the mechanisms of adaptation of receptors. There is a third mechanism, which is in the uh, electromagnetic receptors, cones and rods. There is change in the concentration of the rhodopsin or of the chemical substance. Change in the concentration of chemical substance increase or decrease according to adaptation helps in this adaptation. So these are three important mechanisms of adaptation. These are the three mechanisms. Now, if you have a look at this diagram and which receptors are rapidly adapting, which receptors are uh, intermediately adapting, which receptors are slowly adapting. Can you see the firing? This, these are the impulses per second. You can see the dashed black line immediately comes down. So the firing within fraction of a second, fraction of a second, it comes down, rapidly adapting, very rapidly adapting the Bessinian corpuscles, hair receptors. They are also rapidly adapting within one second, firing decreases. Whereas muscle spindle, joint capsule receptors, these receptors are slowly adapting or non-adapting. So we discussed the mechanisms of adaptation, readjustment in the structure of the receptor, for example, redistribution of fluid, especially in capsulated receptors like Bacinian corpuscles, Meissner's corpuscles. Number two, accommodation in the nerve fiber itself which is a property of the nerve fiber. And what is the mechanism of accommodation, if you remember from first year? It is the threshold. The threshold becomes higher. This is inherited property of the nerve fiber in which with continuous stimulation, the threshold becomes higher. It becomes difficult to excite the nerve fiber. Ultimately, this is one way of, this is called as accommodation and it's one of the mechanisms of adaptation. But it's not at the receptor level, it's at the nerve fiber level. The third mechanism happens in electromagnetic type of receptors like bones and rods. There is change in the concentration of the light sensitive chemical. So this is the mechanism of adaptation, a very important topic. Examples of rapidly adapting receptors we mentioned, Pacinian corpuscles, hair cells, they're also called as phasic receptors, phasic receptors. So rapidly firing and then it stops firing. Then we have the intermediately adapting receptors. Example is thermoreceptors. The thermoreceptors are intermediately adapting receptors. Then we have the slowly adapting receptors and non-adapting receptors. They are also called as tonic receptors. Arrow receptors is an example. We have also, which we just mentioned from the diagram. If you remember the slide before that, we have the joint and muscle receptors, some chemoreceptors as well. Pain receptors are also slow, non-adapting receptors. They're called as tonic receptors. And this is very important. And they shouldn't adapt because if, if pain receptors, they adapt, the patient will not feel pain anymore. If the patient doesn't feel pain anymore, will not come to the hospital. Damage will happen in the liver, damage will happen in the uh, abdomen, damage will happen, in the, will happen in the different tissues. And patient, if pain receptors were to be rapidly adapting, the patient will not feel, will initially feel, feel pain, pain will settle, and then what will happen, the patient will not come to the hospital. So it's very important, very beneficial that pain receptors are non-adapting receptors because pain is the thing that brings the patient to the hospital and that makes the doctor know that some damage is going on, stomach problem is going on. It's the pain that tells that there is some damage in that tissues. So we have the tonic receptors and we have the phasic receptors. Tonic receptors are receptors in which they continuously fire. If the continuous stimulus is applied, the receptors continuously fire. Phasic receptors, if continuous stimulus is applied, they initially fire, there is rapid firing, and then there is no firing anymore. The names they indicate, tonic, means something that is continuously firing. Phasic, phases. Initially, it, it fires, and then it settles down because of adaptation. So tonic receptors, they continue to transmit impulses as long as the stimulus is present. Examples are baroreceptors, joint capsule, muscle spindle, and of course, the non-adapting are very important pain receptors. Phasic receptors are also called as rate receptors or movement receptors because they adapt rapidly 
they are st stimulated initially when the stimulus is applied or when the stimulus is applied and then reapplied again or when the intensity of the stimulus increases then response examples of the most rapidly adapting receptors are Cassinian and Meissner's corpuscles. There is a very important uh, predictive function of great receptors. I would like you to do some self-study and open guide in chapter 46, page 599, and have a look at the predictive function of great receptors. So I hope you are able to explain how receptors function and how they generate receptor potential with special reference to Cassinian corpuscles, very important question, and then adaptation what is it and its different mechanisms thank you if you have any questions we will discuss in the upcoming lectures inshallah thank you very much